Introduction to shop draw reading shop drawings part two Gary Pace um, train eng.com. If you're on a budget and you're looking for a place to go take an online certified weld inspector course, um, give train eng.com a try. Check out the website. There's a lot of different educational options, different modules. Um, go in there, cruise around, see what you like. If there's anything you like, um, go ahead and take a course. If not, if it doesn't fit into what you need, um, thanks for visiting anyways. Okay, so resources. Um, one of the documents that'll show you how to read blueprints and sketches is Blueprint Reading and Sketching, NAVED TRA 14040A. This is the Navy's course on how to read blueprints and sketches. Pretty good. It, it's got some questions at the end of the chapters, kind of knowledge check type of thing. So if you want to, I don't have the answers. So if you, if you want to do them, you're going to have to figure them out yourself, but I don't have answers to them. So sorry about that. Another military manual that uh, is pretty good is NAVED TROF 14069A Engineering Aid. This is basically a draftsman course as far as I'm concerned. So if you want to take a look at this one, you know, do a Google search. There's a couple of places where you can find this PDF out there on the internet. And it's got all kinds of information in regards to how to read, in, read drawings and blueprints and whatnot. And I think it's got some questions at the end of the chapters too. So give it a look. Sorry to the U.S. Army or the Air Force. I don't I don't know what your jobs are, so or where to find the stuff. I was in the Navy, so consequently, I use Navy stuff. Scale block drawing scale is a relationship of the size or distance of an item on a drawing to the real item. So this would be like on a map. You can't have a map of the United States and have it full size, right? It's just not going to work. Where are you going to? How are you going to make a 3,000 mile cross map? So we do things to scale. Let's say your map of the United States is 24 inches across. Well, maybe our scale is one inch equals 100 miles. So that way we can, you know, measure from Topeka to Butte, Montana, and say, oh, it's about this many miles. For example, a scale of one quarter inch to one foot means that a measurement of one quarter inch on the drawing equals one foot of the real world item. So you'd use that on, let's say, the Eiffel Tower. A quarter inch on the drawing equals 10 feet on the, the drawing or whatever. The scale block is the title block of the blueprint shows the size of the drawing compared with the actual size of the part. The scale may be shown as one inch equals two inches, one inch equals 12 inches, one half inch equals one foot, and so forth. For example, the drawing may be shown as full size, one half size, or one four size. If you've got something really small, like a microchip or something, and you put it on a drawing, it's going to go the other way. So instead of having one inch equals 10 feet or one inch equals 50 feet, one inch might equal um, a half an inch or a tenth of an inch or a micron, depending on what your scale is. If the scale is shown as one inch equals two inches, each line on the print is shown one half its actual length. If the scale is shown as three inches equals one inch, each line on the print is three times its actual length. Okay, here's what a scale block looks like. They just throw it down there in the bottom, and it tells you what, what scale you need to be using. Engineer scale. The chain or civil engineer scale, commonly known as the engineer scale, is usually a triangular scale containing six fully divided scales subdivided decimally, each major interval on the scale being subdivided into tenths. Figure 330 shows the engineer scale and the segments of each of the six scales. So I pulled this out of a military manual. Um, each of the six scales is designated by a number representing the number of graduations that, that particular scale has to the linear inch. So this one you can see is 10. They've got 10 on it. 
So every inch is divided into tenths. So this would be what the scale. If you're going to use this scale, it might be scale one inch equals um, a thousand miles. So if you go uh, half an inch, you've just gone 500 miles on the map. So that's what these funky looking rulers are. Um, these engineer scales. They're just each, there's six different sides to them, and usually they have 10, 20, 30, whatever as their graduations. Notes and specifications. Blueprints show all of the information about an object or part graphically. However, supervisors, contractors, manufacturers, and craftsmen need, no, need more information that is not adaptable to the graphic form of presentation. Such information is shown on the drawings as notes or as a set of specifications attached to the drawings. Notes are placed on drawings to give additional information to clarify the object on the blueprint. Leader lines show the precise part notated, or it's a letter. But let's say I wanted, let's say you as a welder, I need you to weld it with um, a certain welding procedure, or I need it with a specific um, filler material like E7018, or I only want you to use low hydrogen electrodes on this, or I don't want you to use 6010 on this, or I want it done with TIG welding only, I would put that in the notes. So it's extra information that you can't show graphically, that I can't draw. I can't draw a picture that says, oh, only use this type of filler material. That's what a note is. A note or a specification tells you, hey, I want it done this way. I couldn't draw what I wanted, so I'm putting it in here as words. So here's what a note or a specification looks like. You can see they've got all kinds of um, information in here. All welding shall be performed by welders certified under AWS procedures in conformance with AWS structural welding code. Those are the kinds of things you put in there. A specification is a statement or a document containing a description such as terms of a contract or details of an object or objects not shown on a blueprint or drawing. Specifications describe items so that they can be manufactured, assembled, maintained according to their performance requirements. They furnish enough information to show that the item conforms to the description and that it can be made without the need for research, development, design, engineering, or other help from the preparing organization. So it's me telling you basically a specification is a recipe. I want my cookies cooked this way. I don't want you having to come up with a recipe for the cookies. I want my cookies done this way. I want them chocolate chip cookies. I don't want hazelnuts or any craziness in there. I just want a plain chocolate chip cookie. I want them three inches in diameter. I want them three eighths of an inch thick. And each one has to have a minimum of 17 chocolate chips in it. This is my specification for a chocolate chip. It's not just me handing you a blueprint and saying, okay, get me some cookies. Well, you bring me oatmeal cookies, and I'm like, where are my chocolate chip cookies? So that's what a specification does. A specification gets it dialed in and tells whoever's making it, I want it done this way. All right, we're going to talk about the meaning of lines. To read blueprints, you must understand the use of lines. The alphabet of lines is the common language of the technician and the engineer. In drawing an object, a draftsman arranges different views in a certain way and then uses different types of lines to convey information. So we're going to take a look at some of these lines. So here we've got, we've got phantom lines, center lines, outlines. Dimension lines, leader lines, section lines. We've got reference numbers on this thing. We've got cutting plane lines. We've got all kinds of stuff. So <clears throat> if you know how to read these lines and you understand the alphabet, then reading a drawing isn't too bad. But it's understanding these five or, the five or six main types of lines is, is the difficult thing for getting started with reading blueprints. Okay, so our basic lines we're going to talk about, object lines, hidden lines, cutting plane lines, center lines, extension line, dimension lines, leader lines, and phantom lines. I don't know if I've got slides on phantom lines in here. Maybe we'll get to that later. An object line. The object line is a heavy, dark, unbroken line 
which identifies the visible edges of the drawing object or the surface of an object. So these ones just show us the things we can see. This is a block. We can see all of these edges. If it's a solid line like this, it means we can see it from this view. A hidden line is used to show features or edges from an object that is not visible. It is a broken line of medium thickness. So you can see this dashed line. So we've got this block here, and we can see our, our visible lines. We can see the edges we can see, but we don't know about the, the, the edges in the back. We know they're there, but we can't see them from this view. So to represent them in this view and let the, the person reading the drawing know that they're there, we do a dashed line. It says, yeah, these lines are here, but they're hidden lines. We can't see them from the direction that we're looking at the drawing. So this is a hidden line. That's what the dashed lines are. The hidden line is used to show features or edges of an object that is not visible. It is a broken line of medium thickness. All right, so here I've got two views. I've got a side view and I've got a top view. So you can see in the side view, I can see that there's a notch down there in the green. I've got those green um, boxes outlining that contour or that edge that we can see. Well, if I turn that part clockwise, clockwise, so that I'm looking at it from the top, so if I'm looking at it from the top, those red lines are showing me that I can't see those lines in the green that are on the side view. So I can see it from the side view, but I can't see it from the top view. And that's why we have hidden lines. These, these dashed lines show us that, hey, I can see it in one view, but I can't see it in another view. Here I've shown I've circled the the line that isn't that isn't hidden. This feature is we can see it from the top. The green line or the green box around that notch. Well, if I turn that and look at it from the top view, I'm gonna see that it's got I can see it from that view. So I can see it from both views. That's why I didn't use that's why it didn't use a dashed line, it used a solid line. So that's kind of the difference between the hidden line and an object line. Okay, a center line is another dashed line that you're going to run across. The center line is used to locate the center of features. It is usually a fine broken line made of alternating short and long dashes. So that's a center line. It's usually going to, you'll see these a lot in circles. Um, a center line will go through a circle, and then you can use it to dimension, you know, from the center of the circle to an edge. Here's a, another center line example used to indicate symmetry about an axis and location of center. So if you got a, you know, a line uh, like a bullseye basically going through a circle, that's telling you where the center of your circle needs to be. Because if you're trying to locate a circle um, or a hole and you're using the edge of the hole, it would get too difficult. So you just use the center of the, um, the circle or the hole to um, denote where you want the center to be. And you can see we've, got, we've used center lines here to tell us that information. Okay, so here we've got dimension lines and extension lines. Dimension lines are used to show the extent of a dimension. So that is going to have a number generally in it, like 3 inches or 7 inches. Here's an extension line. Extension lines are used to extend a point from an object. Because if we didn't have extension lines and we just came off that object with a line, the drawings would get too messy. So we have what's called an extension line. It just tells us that it's an imaginary line that comes off of that edge, and we use it for dimensioning. That's what an extension line is used for. Extension lines, 99% of the time, go with a dimension line.
the basic definitions and dimensions. Um, the dimensions line is a thin line broken in the middle to allow the placement of the dimension value with the arrowheads at each end. So this is what a dimension line looks like. So here we've got this block, this blue block is 23.5 units from the line on the, the extension line on the right to the extension line on the left. An extension line extends a line on an object to the dimension lines. And you see how our extension lines, there's that little space down there in between that and the object. You always have to have that little space. That denotes that, hey, these lines are kind of imaginary and they're just used for measurement purposes. Here's kind of a little block with some more examples of um, extension lines and dimension lines. Um, it's it's giving us some dimensions and it's showing us, I don't know, you know, an arrowhead and just some general information that might be utilized on a drawing. And this is super simple. If you're used to reading blueprints, this is probably the one of the easier things you're ever going to see. But Anyways, that's what we got uh, as far as this sketch goes. Here's another simple drawing. You can see we've got center lines on our two holes there. And then we've got dimensions coming off the center lines. Um, if you look at the very bottom, the center line is telling us it's six units. You know, it doesn't tell if it's says millimeters or centimeters or whatever, inches. But it's six inches from the edge to the center line of that hole. And then it's another 16 units from the center line of that hole to the center line of the next hole. So that's what this drawing is telling us. Maybe we'll dive in a little deeper on the next go around. Okay, so what did we cover? We covered scale block, engineer scale, notes and specifications, the meaning of lines, basic lines, definitions and dimensions, and the, the basic uh, definition and dimension lines. So hopefully this helped you out. I'll try and get another one out. and We'll grind through how to read drawings. I'm hoping this is helping people out. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Take care. GP out.